back guys and if you've been following me on my channel you would see the very first video that we did um post on this channel which was the part one of where we were sharing tips that can help you to succeed in your pebc exams and this video is the part two of that if you're new here my name is Timmy Tope Adesoya, but everyone calls me Timmy. And here with Healthcare with Timmy, we discuss on how to transition to different healthcare careers in Canada. And today is pharmacy's turn. We are talking about pharmacy. And we also share health and wellness tips with the main goal of promoting and improving your general health and well-being. So without further ado, we are just going to jump right into today's video. Hi, guys. Amaka again. So I'm here with tip number seven, which is to study hard. Hmm. <laughs> really, <laughs> it goes without saying. Studying hard for these exams goes without saying, but um, just for the sake of emphasis, we just want to talk about it again. Yeah. So it's important that you dedicate time to hmm. studying. You need to dedicate a lot of time to studying for PBC exams because just the evaluating exams alone, the syllabus is 75 pages as at when, you know, I took, we took the I exam. I can't even remember. Yeah, 75, because <laughs> I, I printed it. I printed it out. 75 pages. It looked like a book that was big enough, you know, for you to study for an exam and feel burnt out studying. Yeah. But that was just the syllabus, hmm. 75 pages. So it's important that you decide that you're going to sacrifice time. Mm. You have to sacrifice a lot of things, you know, have to make time. You know to study for these exams for instance for my ee um we were in directions for immigrants yeah and we every wednesday we come to class the first thing we will do will be a hundred um a hundred um question test ex exam yeah. or test so basically they're expecting you to study from two uh, from thursday or from that wednesday from wednesday to um, the next, the next wednesday. wednesday you study a particular course and then you come and write an exam to evaluate yourself, basically. So, basically, you have to study at least three to five hours every day for EE or more, depending. Because I was working, so I was only able to do three to five hours every day. Mm -hmm. And you need to be very dedicated. You need to stay on course. You need to make sure that nothing else is distracting you. You need to avoid all sorts of distractions. If you feel you can work, you know, yeah. at the same time as doing the exams, you can do it. Then, then you should do it. Then if you feel like, you know what, I won't be able to cope with working and doing these exams, then yeah. it's also okay to not work if you have another source of income, mm -hmm. okay? It's also okay not to work and give it your all. Yeah. But I would say for the evaluating exams, I think it's possible to, it's more possible to work for evaluating exams yeah, than it is well. for the qualifying exams. So that's a tip there if you, if maybe you want to check it out you want to check out working for the you know while doing the evaluating exams mm -hmm. that's something you should keep in mind but then truly you have to sacrifice a lot especially your social life so for me what i did as soon as i saw what i needed to you know study for the exams the first thing i did was to remove myself from social media <laughs> yeah you said i that. removed myself from social media and since that 2020 i found so much peace being away from social media and i've maintained that yeah <laughs> i've really maintained that yes so it's important that you you know make sure you are giving a, a pvc exam study your all you have to give it your all otherwise yeah. you're already setting yourself up for failing mm -hmm. so parties you know socializing going to this place that place you have to limit them I didn't have a social life for the first two years of coming. Basically, yeah, first two years mm -hmm. coming to Canada, I had no social life. In fact, for my evaluating, ex for my qualifying exam part one, I was so engrossed in studying for that exam that I realized one day that I had not stepped out of my apartment in two months. Like even just outside mm -hmm. the door, I hadn't stepped out in two months because I was doing on an online class. We were doing the breading and um, yeah. bridging program. And that alone, you study, um, you sit in class for seven hours every day. Sometimes I still study for an extra seven hours, uh, five hours, five to seven hours, actually, because the closer we get to the exam, the more mm -hmm. I, I, you know, dedicate time. Sometimes I study 16 hours every day um, just, you know, to ensure that I'm getting all the information I need that I'm, I'm preparing yeah. well for these exams. So it's a time of sacrifice. The first, just tell yourself, like I said, initially, you have to, you know, have a timeline. So within that timeline, you know that this is what I'm dedicating my life to doing mm -hmm. within these two years. And don't feel left out if, you know, if you're That's not true. able to meet up with your social life or <laughs> so many other things. Okay. Just know that I'm dedicating this time to 
pursue my goal of becoming a pharmacist in Canada. So that that would, you know that would help you stay focused. Yes, Amaka has said it all for studying hard. It's a sacrifice. It's a time of sacrifice. Um, it's it's it can be frustrating because it would feel like, and for us, it felt like you don't you don't even have any other thing in your life that you are doing. Oh my God! If somebody calls you today, you are reading, or you are in class, <laughs> or you are resting. You know, and it feels like you don't even have any other thing to talk Nothing about. Nothing else. But at the end of the day, it's worth it. It's rewarding. It's rewarding, it's rewarding at the end of the day. It's worth it. So it may seem frustrating. It may seem lonely. That's yeah, a, that's it's a thing. very lonely period. It's a lonely period because friends that you have that are not in your field, you know, they are not going through the same thing. So it may feel very lonely, you know. So just, it's, it's just a time of sacrifice. Just Please. study hard dedicate the hours and you know amaka was saying the hours that she used to study you know that does not mean that you, have you to also study. have to study for depending 14 on hours your own in a pace, day it depends course. on your pace on your own pace you yes. know it depends on your pace so take it at your own pace and keep growing and just keep growing it it's worth it at, at the end of the day when you when you're done with the process and you know god grants you success it so is- Tough yeah. one. It's yeah. a tough process, but eventually yeah. it's worth it. Yeah. Yes. It so is. I would encourage you to have that at the back of your mind when you're coming here, so that um, because also some people would you know come here, they don't realize how much time they need to put into the studying process. Yes. And then they just do the bare minimum, and then they end up failing. Yes. So the very next tip, tip number nine, would be find ways to unwind. Oh. Now <laughs> we have talked about studying hard. But you need to find ways to unwind. Very right? important. And and that is relative. There's no there's no rule to say, oh, go to this place and go to this place. That depends on you. Because I know Amaka then would tell us then in our study group that, you know, she, she watches a particular series, maybe one episode per day or something like that. Oh, Was it? <laughs> one episode per day might be the might be the initial plan but I, at the end of the day i might end up watching more than one episode but, but that of, was relaxing yeah, for you it was extremely relaxing so what i did was to find comedy series i have a few recommendations on netflix <laughs> yes fresh prince of bel-air sister sister all those all those pg you know um series that you make you laugh all those mm-hmm. sitcoms you know someone suggested this to me and as soon as i started doing it oh my god i had to because it's you you're going to you're going to feel so burnt out yeah. if you don't do that if you don't find a way to unwind at least one hour a day so mm-hmm. after classes seven hours then dream breading mm-hmm. seven hours sitting in class i take one hour in fact i cannot do without it if i haven't like it's it fits into my timetable that i have to watch a series i have to watch something to unwind and then i start studying again yeah so find so what suits you find what suits you and don't don't stay there too too much. You know, even though you're sometimes, unwinding, sometimes, but then once you catch yourself, you know, spending yeah. too much time in it to you, you just, know, you just, just bring yourself back again. But it's important because there's so much. Will I say there's so much built up tension? Oh my god, the information, information no, that you just need to unwind. Just so if, to. if for you that means unwind, unwinding once a week, once a day, every two days, whatever it is, taking a drive, taking exactly. a walk. Whatever it is that means to you, that you find that it works for you, you are calmer, you are not thinking about exams. You know, the reality is that when you're getting close to exams, even though when you're unwinding, you, the exam tension, the tension, oh my you God. start to think about anxiety. Anxiety is so heightened. So, what's the exams? But still find ways to unwind. And yes. if that means um, spending time with your family, spending time with your kids, whatever that means to you, just yeah. find ways to unwind during this process. Don't be so focused on reading 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 that you're not actually taking time to relax okay so whatever that means for you please stick to it yeah okay so tip number 10 would be to use the right study materials Mm. so it's important that you are using the right materials like i said before when you come to when you arrive this place or you are you know writing your exams from outside of canada but once you venture into the pbc process and you know you learn about these preparatory courses and you network with people many many materials will start flying around yes a thousand and one of them and Mm -hmm. you can easily get confused and sidetracked you know if you're not careful okay so it's important that you use the right study materials and um pbc has on their website a list of recommended textbooks yeah but i find that it's um not very realistic for international pharmacy graduates to use all those textbooks because those Mm -hmm. are actually the 
textbooks that the Canadian grads use all through, through school, through their, through. through their five years of pharmacy mm -hmm. or four years of pharmacy school here. Yeah. So it's, I find that it's not realistic. And I personally don't know any international pharmacy graduates that use textbooks that were mm -hmm. recommended by PVC. So, um, but then there are many study materials out there that are Canadian references. Yeah. So Canadian references, for example, the qualifying exams, we have the CTC, which is the Compendium of Therapeutic Choices. Yeah. We have the CTMA, the Compendium of um, Therapeutic Choices for Minor Ailments. Mm -hmm. um, you know, th then there is the, the CPS is basically a, a collection of everything, everything including together. the CTC and the CTMA. CTMA. Yeah. Um, so there are lots of, actually, there are lots of Canadian textbooks that we use or references in this case that we use for the exams. And it's important that you read or at least make reference to those textbooks while you are, you know, to those um, materials while you are studying for this exam. Then the preparatory courses, lots of them will produce materials as well because exactly. the Canadian um, references are, might not be enough for you to prepare for the exams. For instance, um, during the qualifying exams, there is the management aspect that you don't find in any Canadian reference. That's true. Um, which um, I know that this courses, some of them would produce these materials and, um, you know, give to their students. And sometimes, even if you're not registered with them some, sometimes people share these materials okay yeah. so sometimes people share these materials and you can lay your hands on them but be be very careful what you're laying your hands upon mm -hmm. because you can get the material that you feel that oh this is this has a lot of information and the information in there is wrong so that's why mm -hmm. it's also important to stay connected with the right people ask questions you know you know to people that have gone through this process and came out successfully and then you know they'll point you in the right direction. So the right study material is very important. Yeah, that's Amaka has said it all basically. Um, have very, very important your study materials. Make sure you are using Canadian references. Trust me, when you start the process and you're in different WhatsApp, Telegram groups, groups you see all sorts of handouts, all sorts of and some some of these materials may be American. American, yes. American materials that their units is even different exactly from yours. So make sure that you are actually using Canadian based guidelines. references, guidelines. guidelines. Guidelines is also very, very important. important. Guidelines because <laughs> you may get some materials where they said, "Oh, the first line of treatment for heart failure is this." Is this? However, the guidelines guideline have changed, changed by 2023. Yeah, we're going to talk about being updated. Too. Yes, aha. Uh -huh. So Amaka is going to talk about that. So make sure that you are using guidelines as you're reading and you're using your CTC, CT, that's for qualifying exam, that is, CTC, CTMA, make sure you're also checking the Canadian guidelines. So yeah. study materials, having the study materials is very, very important. very important. So to the very next tip, that's tip number 10, that would be a strong support system. Hmm. This journey is long. This journey is frustrating. Tedious. It's very, it's tedious. I don't want to use the word hard. <laughs> because I don't want to discourage, discourage anyone, people, right? Yes. But, but in reality, in reality, it's tedious. It's frustrating. There are moments of tears. Can we be a, honest? A here? lot of a lot of those moments. <laughs> there are lots of moments oh my of God. tears of frustration where you feel like, like we've had moments like myself, Amaka, and our friend Olaku, we're all in the same do. study group, all through, all through, all through this process, right? And. We would record voice notes to each other. Like you would wake <laughs> up at 2 a.m. and I'm seeing a voice note from Amaka or from Peju. I'm tired. You're oh just tired. <laughs> and, and there's no other person to understand than exactly. someone that is in the process. In the process. So I think um, you need to have a strong support system first in the process. Okay. I, I was so blessed to have my my study group members. Yeah. They were a very, very strong source of support for me mm -hmm. because they understood what I was feeling. They understood what I was going through because yeah. we were all going through it together. At the same time. And then it's also important that you have a support system, be it friends or family mm -hmm. or your spouse, mm -hmm. if you're a man or a woman. Because there will be times where if you're a man or a woman, you cannot work mm. or you cannot do certain things at home. Yeah. And the other person has to pick up the slack yeah. because you cannot do it. Like there's just no way you can manage it at that time, especially when you're getting close to exams. Exactly. So for example, you have kids, it may have yeah. to be your wife or your husband that may have to be doing school runs, um, extracurricular activities for the kids, yeah. doing some house chores because you just cannot, and you cannot afford to start thinking of that at that time. Exactly. Like, oh, I have to go to school because your mind should be focused at that time. Yeah. So having a support exactly. system, I know of some people who are taking their kids back home 
yeah, to Nigeria to exams, yes. just so they can focus My on their exams. exams as well. I know of people who did that. If that's what you need to do to make sure that you are sane and that yeah. you can do this exam the right way, please do that. If you have that kind of support system that can allow you to do that, please take advantage of the people around you. Sure. Um, it's so important. Like, you cannot do this on your own. Yeah. Like, sometimes with school runs, you may need people to help you drop your kids, or help you bring your kids back. You may have to start doing carpooling. You know, just yeah. so many things. Like, you just need that support around you. You need friends around you. Even support back home. Yeah. Like, even back home, I had times that my parents had to also understand that I could not be calling every other day like I used to call before. Mm -hmm. So that was a source of support. And also they were supporting me with their prayers. Exactly. I was going to like, say that. They were supporting me with their prayers. Yeah. So important. They were supporting me with their prayers. You know, like, oh, just sorry. Sometimes I'll call my mom. I'm so, like, I'm just tired. Yeah. <laughs> like, you guys, so, so they're just tired. Like, the journey gets tiring. Very tiring. And so it's so important that you have people to talk to and people that can support you. People that would support you with encouraging words. Because yeah. this is a tedious and sometimes frustrating journey. So yeah. you need someone that would be uplifting you, okay? Mm -hmm. You need someone that would pray for you, someone that will tell you, you know what, you got this. Mm -hmm. You really need such people. Surround yourself with such people. Like she said, if it's your spouse, your friends, you know, your family back home, or if you have family here, yeah, import very important that sometimes you even have to delegate, especially closer to the exams, mm -hmm. you may need to delegate some responsibilities. Because me, during the, closer to the exams, I wouldn't cook. I wouldn't. In fact, my husband has to, you know, um, remind me to eat sometimes. Yeah. Because I'm so engrossed. Like, I would just hold my books and I'll be reading for 12 hours straight. I wouldn't move. I wouldn't, like, mm -hmm. yeah. So you need support. Mm -hmm. You really need support. To yes. And I thought to mention, because some people will say, oh, they were not aware of this. Um, thank God for this kind of platform. Just mm -hmm. to mention, if you're someone that you're coming to Canada, maybe you have a newborn baby or something like that, yeah. you may want to consider while you're doing this whole process of immigration. I know of people who did that, who would also try to get like a visitor's visa for their mom or for their yes. husband's mom so that, you know, not long after they land, the grandma or grandpa is around mm -hmm. to help them to take help care of out. the kids because it can get overwhelming. Very so if, if that's your situation, that's something to put into your plan. Yeah. Like when you are doing this immigration process. Okay. Mm -hmm. So just wanted to point that out.